Cruisin' from the Fireplace Restaurant celebrating 10 years of cruising in Poland, Ohio, starts right now. Thanks for joining Cruisin'. Today we're set up at the Fireplace Car Show in Poland, Ohio. We brought the big guy, Jerry Miglitz, who started this 10 years ago, and it just keeps getting bigger. 10 years ago, buddy and I sitting at the bar drinking. He says, why don't we have a car show? I said, how are we gonna have a car show? Yeah, well, we got cars and the people to show up. So we started a car show. And here we are 10 years later doing this crazy thing. So a lot of thought goes into starting a car show, apparently. Uh, about four beers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's been the most fun about doing this for 10 years? You know what? Just meeting the people. And the, guy, the guys that come with their cars, and every car has a different story. It's like your history on it. Um, I've got one, my dad's old car. Anybody out here, their car has a story to it. And, and that's the unique thing about it. And the guys of all, every car is the nicest one going on it from that standpoint. But, you know, it's fun. That's, that's how we put it together. This started on Thursday nights. One of the guys said, why don't you do it on a Sunday afternoon? Okay, what are we gonna do on a Sunday afternoon? Well, we're gonna go run around and check out some of these stories and maybe dodge the deputy. I was always told the key to a classic car is a bottle of Captain Morgan. That's right. It's better than, oh my God, Jack Daniels. Why do we have a bottle of Captain Morgan in our car? Because a lot of these rat rods have Jack Daniel bottles in them, so I want to be everything to be different. So I'll put a Morgan bottle in there. So with all these cars here, uh, your investment into a car show started with a $300 car purchase? Correct. Well, one day I was driving down on the west side of Young Center, Mahoney Avenue, and his old man broke down. And I pulled him home, and he had this car all mangled in his driveway and he was selling for $300. I didn't have the money, so I traded him a cheap Cherokee for the car. And that's how that all rolled. So you traded your everyday car for a mangled car? Correct, yes. That sounds like a good deal. It was a really good deal. Because <laughs> I knew what I was going to do to it. I was looking for it. It's a beautiful car, uh, yet I would guess body shops and like the people at Mako probably hate you pulling up and parking in front of their place. Correct, yes. How did this paint job happen? Miles, he had it and painted with black spray paint. And I liked the car and everybody liked it. So I came home, went to go sand it down with a DA to flat black it the right way. And all these pictures and the shapes start coming out. And people started coming out, looking at it, liking it, and told me not to change it. So the car has been green, it's been purple, it's been black, now it's kind of gray. Where are we gonna go next? Like I'm Oh, I'm not, it's done. I'm just going to, preserve it and put some kind of shine on it to keep it just like it is. By the way, among the, the unique things, I, I really got a question, why more people don't have parts of coffee tables on their car? My uncle had this cap with stars on it and it reminded me of him. So when my son threw this coffee table, I had these little metal tabs on them. So I popped them all out and stuck them on my car. I didn't build it to park it in a garage. I built it to drive it and people appreciate my car and I appreciate it you know, driving it. Uh, John, we show up, you got all these, car, these cars just glimmering in the light, and then you see this, and you're like, somehow, this is really beautiful. Thank you. Explain the paint. Uh, it's just natural weathered patina from being 62 years old. Uh, and when I bought it, I was gonna paint it, and just over the, over the time that I worked on it, I changed my mind, and it's not getting changed, it's staying the way it is. I think it's key that you buy a truck that has your name of a body shop on it. <laughs> yeah, it just happened to be that way. I mean, <laughs> it's just different. Everyone asked me, it's like, I don't have the shop. It was on the truck when I got it, so I just left it there. What have you had to do to it so far? Uh, I lowered it another two and a half inches. I had new rims, tires. I see notched the frame in the back and cleaned all that up. Then I pulled the motor out, redid it, painted it, and got it all cleaned up in there and put it back together and and I'm gonna do all the interior this winter and that's basically about it. I mean, I'm, the way it looks right now is the way it's gonna look as long as I own it. Now, were you shopping for this or did it just um, kinda happen or what? I was looking for a, like a 51 to 53 and my dad had one like this before he passed away. So I went with this one instead. So lots of memories of dad's yep. truck? I, I like it better. I'm glad I bought it. 
So here you are driving down the street in a 70 Challenger. When a 2016 drives up next to you, you just kind of like, Pfft. yeah, right, a little bit, yeah. <laughs> What's so it, cool about the 70 Challenger? Uh, it's it's a very rare car with the TA, but it's uh, just as, I mean, they actually made the new ones after it with the lines on the quarters and that. Now this wasn't the car you always wanted. No, no, I was always a Ford guy. <laughs> well, this is a departure. Yeah, a little bit. Just because I was at the right place at the right time. Well, of course you were, because when you were 16, you were watching this car get restored. Yeah. Tell me about how that went. Uh, well, my my dad's friend bought the car, and it needed completely redone, and they did a rotisserie restoration on it, and um, his friend eventually wanted to sell the car. And this was, he owned it probably 15 years or so, and I just happened to be around at the time, and. I, I could afford it, so I had to have it. Now, when Dad and his friend were working on the car, you were like high school age? Yeah. So there was no way to convince them, maybe, hey, let me take it to prom, it'll be no. like a test drive for later? It, no, no way. What'd you end up taking to prom? Uh, I had a Mustang at the time. Oh, well, I'm not gonna feel bad for you. <laughs> Under the hood, what are we looking at when we pop the hood? It's a 340 six-pack with the three two-barrel carburetors on it. Okay, so um, what's it like to drive? Uh, well, you get a lot of looks driving down the road, and with the old, it's real fun to drive with the old four speed. A lot different from new cars with, you know, all the air conditioning and everything. It's kind of a back to basics thing, but I mean, you look at this and you think muscle car, which it is. Right. But what about handling and stuff? Uh, it was built to be a road course car, but. You know, after driving new cars and that, you know, it's like driving a boat, you know. Can, you know, compared to the new stuff, I mean, handles so much better than this, what was built to be a, a road course car. To be fair, it's a pretty fast boat. Yeah, yeah. What's the best part about owning this car? Uh, it's like, I mean, it's like you could jump in it, turn the key and drive it anywhere. You know, you don't have to worry about anything. Why, it's so funny because everyone's gone automatic. Yeah. Uh, what do you really love about getting back to basics with the four-speed? It, it's a lot more fun to drive than an automatic. It, that's, I think that's with anything. Maybe except for a new car, but four-speed's a lot more fun in my opinion. We're coming back with more cruising from the Fireplace Restaurant in Poland, Ohio. Stick with us. From project to pride and joy, the restoration specialists at Buckeye Classic Car Restoration can make your dreams come true. Our master body, paint, and mechanical technicians have over 100 years of experience. They do research, can communicate every detail of the restoration process, and their restorations win big time awards. Buckeye Classic Car Restoration cars have been winning awards since 2001. Let the restoration specialists at Buckeye Classic Car Restoration turn your project into an award winner. Closed captioning provided by Blue Line Classics, home of the original Sanford and Son TV truck. Conveniently located in North Royalton, Ohio, we specialize in buying and selling antique classic and muscle cars and trucks. If you're interested in selling your classic car or looking to purchase a new classic, call us today. Welcome back to the Fireplace Restaurant, celebrating 10 years of cruising in Poland, Ohio on Cruising. What did you really love? Because, I mean, you were only hunting for one of these. What did you love when you first saw the 61 vet? Well, I, I did like these cars. I was looking for one. What I like about them is it has a trunk. You can put two golf bags in it. Like I said, I'm a golfer. And uh, the spare tire is in the trunk, as opposed to the later years where you got to crawl underneath them. Now, you found this in a barn? Tell me about no. how you got it. I oh, okay. got it off of a gentleman that got it in a barn that went to school, high school, with the woman that owned it. What jumped out at you when you first saw it? Uh, the paint. And I just was telling you, it's a 30-year-old paint job, and it, I was stunned by uh, how good of a job it was. Now, the 61, you were telling me this is one of the very few, like 100-whatever fuel-injected ones? Well, it's the lower horsepower fuel-injected. There was only 112 of those made. Then it has a power top and I think there was only about 400 of those. So if you combine that together, it's a pretty 
sought after rare car. Uh, climbing in the interior, uh, it seems really unusual. What do you like about the interior? Well, the interior has been all redone and was well cared for. So well, there's only one change in there, and that, now two changes. Is the steering wheel is a little smaller because my knee's bad, and uh, the, the uh, radio. I put an updated radio in there that looks just like the, the old. Now, uh, you got this car when? Got this car about eight years ago. So whatever money I make, the old lady can't, you know, complain. So I take the money and I dump it in the car. So basically, you got a Corvette just to keep your wife happy. No, to keep me happy. <laughs> <laughs> You're a good husband. Well, I try to be. I've been married, uh, let's see, 50 years. Now, this was a little bit body style difference, right? What, what did they change in 61 as opposed to 60? Well, the uh, back end was rounded and uh, the exhaust come out of the, uh, the bumper, which to me is, you know, this is the Stingray rear end, and the exhaust comes out behind the rear wheel. And the front's, the front's different too, well, isn't it? Well, the front is a double headlight. How could you not like that? So you've had the different vets. What's it like to drive this one? You better have some arm muscles. It's, uh, <laughs> there's no power steering. It's, uh, it's just a good, sporty, enthusiastic car. But if you're going fast enough, isn't turning the wheel pretty easy? Yeah, it's no problem there. Where you die is when you get in a parking lot like this. What are some of the different comments? Because it, it just jumps out. I mean, it's one of the first things we notice when we walk in here. What are some of the different comments you get? Well, I, everybody loves the color, and it's it's a, a color that it's, it's hard to get now. You know, it's just they ain't making it anymore. Yeah, what is it called, Brandywine? It's like no, a, it's Sunset Red. Sunset Red. Yeah, I haven't seen one like that. Yeah. Uh, so what's left to do? It looks well. It looks like you're done. I might update the brakes and uh, update uh, suspension-wise, and that's about it. What's the most fun thing about driving this? Uh, no matter where I go, everybody likes it, and it doesn't Maybe matter. Maybe it's your personality in the car's secondary. Well, no, I, I don't know about that. How did the process, we go from a stock 72 Monte Carlo to what we're staring at? Actually, one of our buddies had a chop top 72 Monte Carlo. I tried to buy that car from his wife and she wouldn't sell it to me. So I bought this one in 88, and reached out the top and started working on it, okay? My thought is, you seem a little tall for a chop top. You ever think maybe once you got it together, you'd be kind of like do a Dino from the Flintstones where your head pops out? <laughs> in 1988, I didn't have this, okay? <laughs> Actually, the front seat, we cut the seat tracks off on the front seat. You cannot move the front seat. Also, I had to put a tilt column in it so I could get in it. When you get in it, you go on your head first and then you sit down. You cannot just sit in it normally. Yes, that's, that's this true. This sounds like a lot of work to drive. It's okay once you get in it. Tell me about the taillights. John had the taillights upstairs in his garage, okay? We thought for a long time they were Rivieras, but they're not. They're 73 Rambler Ambassador Brome. I have a lot of fun with people trying to figure out what taillights are in that thing, okay? It's probably the most unique paint job I've ever seen. You've got the chameleon in the front and all the blending. Did you Now, did he have a vision of this? Did you just say, yeah, John, do whatever you want? John was the kind of guy that you didn't push him, and he, we did work on it when he felt like it. It's been almost 10 years since, it was, since we, we painted it, okay? The interior. Mm -hmm. Obviously, again, they didn't do like door panels like that. That's all no, you got. No, no. I had my buddy Eddie up to custom interior in Niles. He did the interior, made the headliner, made the door panels, did all that stuff, put the seat in it. Well, this is like, you look at it and you're like, you're like driving a very powerful piece of art. But I think the most interesting thing is we look at this and think it's perfect, but uh, tell me about the mistakes you made. Well, <laughs> we, as I said, we did the front end once before. And we were sitting back there having a, having a beer or two and we didn't like it. Either John and I didn't like it. So anyway, we ended up with this. You might have to quit drinking. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but no, there's one other mistake you told me about. I specifically looked for a Monte Carlo without AC when we were looking for cars. Why? Well, you know, that was 30 years ago, okay? I was a lot younger then, you know? That was a big mistake. That was a big mistake, <laughs> yeah. And Monte Carlos without AC are hard to find because most of them had AC. Do you think maybe there's a reason that people wanted AC? Yeah, yeah. And I thought about putting aftermarket AC on it, you know? But, uh, Nah, too old, man. 74, you know, that's enough. Obviously, this car has so much meaning to you because you even bought it back. Yeah. Uh, so when you drive it, do, do you think about a lot of the things? I think about my buddy John a lot, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Super guy, super guy. You couldn't push him though. It's kind of ornery, but. And he doesn't have a problem spending your 7,000. He did not. That was only the beginning. The 7,000 was only the beginning, okay? Up next. We are the premier manufacturer of these in the United States. We have built over 110 of these bodies. The Buckeye guys, they're next on Cruising. Welcome to this week's edition of Cruising with the Buckeye Guys. Again, in front of me, I have a 1968 to 77 Ford Bronco tub. We are the premier manufacturer of these in the United States. We have built over 110 of these bodies. If you want one, give us a call at 330-533-0048. We can build this, customize it completely for your needs. This is the hottest restoration vehicle on the market today. We have the spot welders and manufacturer these as well. Depending on what modifications you want for your classic Bronco, spec out frames for you, fix your old rusty frame, drop this tub on your frame with full sheet metal and get it rolling for you. We also sell custom repair parts for your Bronco as well. We have the back half tub section. We sell the floor assembly. We also sell the doghouse assembly for your classic Bronco restoration. Um, all custom made here are in, in our in-house fixtures. We pride ourselves on manufacturing these tubs. They're the best on the market. And uh, our big customer, Classic Broncos down in Columbus, they love them. All their builds feature our bodies. When with buying a Classic Bronco tub, this here is the easiest way out for your restoration project or your custom build. A new tub is so much simpler to do the bodywork on than a full sheet metal replacement on an existing steel body. When you get all new steel tub, everything is new. Everything is where it's supposed to be. The options with this tub as well, standard is it comes with the doors as you see it here in the shipping crate. We also can sell with the hood, fenders, grill, and tailgate on this uh, to make your restoration that much easier, all pre-fit. Now, if you bring us your existing frame, we can mount this to your frame and get it all going for you as well. Now, this frame in front of me here uh, at Buckeye Classic Car Restoration, it was in such bad shape, we had to restore and replace the front frame mounts, the mid frame mounts, and the le rear leaf spring shackles. These are all new, all custom made by us, all welded in place in our proprietary fixture so it's square and level. Once the rust belt tub is placed on this frame, it's a 1974 frame, your vehicle is still titled a 1974 Ford Bronco, which is a major, major big thing in the today's world. Um, unlike a replacement frame, you have an original title with your Bronco tub. At Buckeye Classic Car Restoration, please give us a call for your, all your Bronco restoration needs or all your Classic Car Restoration needs. We can handle all jobs, big or small. 330-533-4757 or give Rust Belt Broncos a call at 330-533-0048 to order your Bronco tub. Coming up. A lot of these were old steel mill cars. They got, you know, junk for cash. Next on Cruising. From project to pride and joy, the restoration specialists at Buckeye Classic Car Restoration can make your dreams come true. Our master body, paint, and mechanical technicians have over 100 years of experience. They do research, can communicate every detail of the restoration process, and their restorations win big time awards. Buckeye Classic Car Restoration cars have been winning awards since 2001. Let the restoration specialists at Buckeye Classic Car Restoration turn your project into an award winner. Welcome back to the Fireplace Restaurant in Poland, Ohio, where we are celebrating 10 years of cruising on Cruising. I don't see a lot of Dodge Aspens. Why did you want a Dodge Aspen? In this area, it's kind of a rare car. Actually, the whole United States, a lot of these were old steel mill cars. They got, you know, junk for cash, cash for clunkers in this area. They're just an old nostalgic car. This doesn't look like a, a cash for clunker kind of car. Not this one, but a few other ones in the areas. So what, why did you want it though? What really drew you to it? Well, the drivetrain for one, the body style, and the nostalgia of it. It's just something you don't see in this area. Uh, now, different... when you got it, uh, you went up to Michigan to get it. Yes, I did. Pretty good shape, but you still had a lot of work. What were the first things you had to do? Well, it needed a lot of electrical work. The front end was totally destroyed. I had to rebuild that. But other than that, the car was in fine condition. So it's weird, though, because I look at this, and you got the Hemi Orange, which is awesome. But really draws you is the wheels. Tell me about the wheels. 
those are original police interceptor rails with what they call dog dish hubcaps or poverty caps. Poverty caps. Poverty yeah. caps. All the old guys will get a kick out of that because they all know what they are. Uh, the dash kind of feels like kind of a race feel. Yes, it's kind of a sporty, you know, back then. They didn't come with a whole lot of stuff. So this has kind of become your car. Now you're gonna, you haven't done it yet, but you're gonna take it on the track? Yes, I plan on making a couple test runs with it. What's the goal with this? Goal is to try to get it around 12 seconds and I'll be happy. I know it's not fast. There's a lot of faster cars out there, but it's just a fun car to drive. Now you were into cars when you were young, then you took some time off for family. Now you're back into it. We're like, why did I get away from this? Well, it's an expensive hobby, as everybody knows, for number one. Number two is family life comes first. What's, what do you find most enjoyable about doing this with your son? Uh, watching him more than anything else, not just his you know, his, his actions and stuff on the track, but his excitement. At one point, like, have you reminded him yet that dad's car is still cooler than his? <laughs> yes, I have, quite a few times. And he's hoping to drive this one day, which that day will come. You're a generous dad. Why not? I can't, I can't take it with me, so I might as well give it to him. As you can see, it's been a fantastic day here at the 10th annual uh, Fireplace Car Show. One reason one of the guys has been here since day one, Nate Miller from the Buckeye Guys. That's right, the Buckeye Guys. You know, we come out here, we give the Akron Children's Hospital here for this show. It's a fantastic time. Great day for the 10th anniversary show. What's been the most, the most pleasing part, or what have you enjoyed the most about watching this car show grow? Um, from the time it started to what it is now, and the um, donations we get for Akron Children's Hospital is the best part. And at some point, do you feel like, yeah, I need myself another car? I'm in the 4x4s now. We love these Broncos, and we drive them off-road all the time. All right, well, we expect you to bring some next year for the Olympics. We'll have car some show. Broncos here next year. Nate, thank you so much for being a part of this and having us out here. If you see a car show near you, go check it out. And if you're, like, at home, we'll just keep watching Cruising because we're always coming back. Thanks for joining us. I'm Bill Baronke. Have a fantastic day. Thanks, Bill.